This is a Grande Pacific production. Okay, welcome back to the Grande Pacific. Uh, gonna give you a quick video today on an important subject called track cleaning and what you need to do to clean your track. I'm going to say right up front there probably could be another five videos done on this by five different people who would come up with some things they agree with or don't agree with but the one basic thing I'm gonna say I think everybody in this hobby will agree with if you don't have a good electrical contact with your track and your engines and door lighted cars or in my case cars that have a resistors on freight car wheels for detection purposes you're going to have problems. Uh, this particular railroad gets into the large variety so that's why I put on the bottom of all my correspondence CEO and head track cleaner. It is an ever-ending task. So uh, clubs, you know, everybody wants to turn their head and look the other way. Uh, you got to keep the track clean. So in front of you, you see uh, some tools I use on thing. The switch is for demonstration purposes. This is a little car that has a tank on it and a pad. We use to spread the uh, track cleaning liquid on, along the track because it has a lig uh, lubricant in it and uh, to keep the track and the electrical contact. We're after electrical contact here. Uh, a lot of conversation a good friend of mine down in Australia I've gotten to be friends with fish plate films just did one and he gets into the explanation about electrical contact um, you may be in an environment with your trains and this is a pretty good environment in this building I don't have to keep after the track most of the time I run this around about every four or five months and fill a little tank up with something we're going to talk about here in a minute and it wipes a coating on the track. Now, the reason I'm showing you this car right off the bat and then you say what does this have to do with uh, clean track? Those are metal wheels. Uh, if you're running DCC this is the only acceptable thing you can have is metal wheels we'll get into this aspect of it later right there is the insulator or excuse me the resistor a 5000 ohm resistor on that wheel there's one on this end also uh, don't that yeah, right there uh, each end of the car has got a resistor for detection purposes for blocks that resistance is enough to trigger a BD20 into an AIOU1, this is an NCE system, that will light the signal on the panel that says that block's occupied. So every car, every engine, every caboose has got resistance in it through some form or another. So if those wheels, and we're going to get into that, are not clean and you don't have good contact, that's not going to work either. Now. I use and I have for many years a product called Track and Rail, Rail Cleaner Act so, uh, 6006. Uh, let's see. I'll give you this shot right here so you can hit the pause button if you want to know where to get it from. Uh, I do not have any contact with these people as far as endorsing. I just tell you it works. Uh, no affiliation with them at all. There are other products out there of the same nature you could use, but uh, this product does have cleaner in it and it does have a very fine lubricant in it. So uh, I'll tell you that up front because I hear people say, oh, I'm not going to put any oil on my track. Okay, I'm not going to get into that discussion today, Procon. I'm only going to tell you what I do, and this works. Uh, it cleans the wheels, it cleans the tracks, uh, 
and uh, it keeps the electrical contact going on this uh, railroad real well. I don't use that bottle or the applicator they give. Um, I went to Sally's Beauty Supply and bought a, uh, you can ask your wife what this bottle's for. It's the one they use to tint the roots. Okay, no, we won't get into that. Uh, this is my bottle of track cleaner, okay? So it's got a small tip in it. You'll see me use this later. Okay, now we're going to get into the part where uh, we get some controversy. This is what I use for a track cleaning pad. Notice the word fine on there. Do not use anything bigger than fine. Uh, this is going to uh, uh, put minute scratches on your track surface. That is where the discussion comes in. Uh, I find it necessary, particularly when you're working on track, painting track, doing scenery work, ballasting. I wipe it off with wet water before, you know, before it dries and all that, but you still got to go back and polish the rail. This, I found, solved a lot of problems with scoring on the track. This works extremely well. Um, maybe if you get a magnifying glass and get in there, you can see some type of scratching, but this is extremely usable this does have a drawback uh, I will show you in a demonstration what that drawback is and then we'll get into one thing you haven't seen that you got to have when you're keeping your track clean and that's called a vacuum cleaner now good old exacto knife that's for cleaning wheels and we'll demonstrate that one. I went and found a car with some dirty wheels. Now, things I don't use. The good old Bright Boy is sold by Walters and several other thousand people, I think. This is abrasive. Unless you just really got a mean spot somewhere that you got to get off of a track, do not recommend these things. Very, very abrasive. A uh, couple of rags. These, these, uh, this gets into wiping track with the track cleaner. Uh, sometimes I'll just go around, particularly in heavy use areas, and uh, wipe them off with the rag. So uh, this thing. Paper towels. Mm, well, if we pan over here a little bit, you'll see one that's been used. Uh, that's for wheel cleaning. Can't use the paper towels for anything else other than that. Uh, they start when they're wet, they shred apart. And you, that, you use that, then you got all kind of paper stuff stuck around, and then you got to go clean that up. So, the only thing I use the paper towels for is the wheel cleaning. Now, the other thing you got to have is one of these a vacuum cleaner. Because cleaning the track also means cleaning up all the stuff that can get on the track in a model railroad. And that gets into, if you watch my other videos on CalCoat, I banned all plaster and hydrocal from my layout 20 years ago. It is a disaster. It's a disaster on engine wheels, gears, everything. If you, <laughs> and I don't care how hard you try, uh, it seems to end up on everything. So uh, I'll just let it go with that. I already did the videos on CalCoat 127 if you want to uh, use that product. Uh, you're welcome to watch those videos. Um, so at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, pad right here. This is one of these sanding blocks. And we're going to show you why you got to have a vacuum cleaner. If I sit here and I rub on this switch. You'll notice, boy, that track surface is really shiny. Nice and shiny. But look underneath the switch after I move it. You have a fine grit there. So this is important to remember. If you go and you use that pad other than to just 
wipe off the heads of the tracks lightly. If you do any serious rubbing anywhere, maybe to remove some glue that got stuck or some paint, you're going to end up with a pretty good pile of grit. If you got good eyesight, which I got to admit, mine's not in the best of shape, but if you got good eyesight, you'll see it because it's kind of gray. Even on my black ballast, it shows up. But you need to get rid of that. So then you come into my next point about your railroad is it's got to be vacuum cleaner proof. So when you do this, you don't end up sucking the scenery up. So now we've removed the grit. So envision that being your regular ballasted track. So you want to be able to do everything. Every piece of scenery on this layout, and I have many videos of all the layout with the scenery, the grass, the anything. Anything on this layout is uh, glued down and it goes through the vacuum test. It's got to be able to be hit with the full strength vacuum because all of it, one, accumulates dust, and two, when you do any type of track cleaning like that, you're going to uh, need to get that stuff up off your uh, railroad. So that gets into the, uh, covers the point about what those pads do and the residue they leave behind. If you're talking about just cleaning or wiping off a track, you can take the towel, put some on uh, track cleaning on the towel, and wipe off the track. This puts, cleans the track, <laughs> yeah, it cleans the track. <laughs> mm. Maybe I should have cleaned it first. Huh? No, just kidding you. I, I, I made sure that that part of the track hadn't been wiped off in a while. And that's what you get off the track. Now, it'll leave a little residue on there. Well, it's an electrical contact issue. I don't have those issues. It's probably the area which I get the people come over here and operate and they say, well, my engines, they work, work so good, they don't stall. Well, it's all about electrical contact. So let's go on. We're going to shut down, skip on forward here, and we're going to do uh, show you the car. Now, for me, this can get to be a project. You start getting into the 500 car range, it gets to be a thing. So another great reason to keep your track in everything clean and so forth. But as cars ride around, and they've been riding around the railroad for a long time, you flip them over, you'll see the uh, dirt built up on the cars. And the only way you're going to break that loose is to scrape it if you see it built up with an X-Acto knife. Uh, they, sometimes it gets so bad it comes off in a, like a spare tire in a ring. And you just have to go through and look for the spots. This car had a spot or two on it, and uh, that I could see right here, for example. I can see dirt built up on this car right here. And just running it on a wet piece of towel with the track cleaner, we'll get it, but sometimes the dirt's so thick on a spare tire, I call them that you're not going to get it off without breaking it with an exacto knife. If you club off people in clubs that have clubs and so forth, uh, this is where you have to have a whole team of people assigned to uh, uh, check the cars and clean them. It comes under the uh, track, the car maintenance department, and it's an ending process. So we need to go one more step with this, so let me go move on. Now I've placed a nice clean piece of paper towel on the uh, track here and what I'll do is I'll put some uh, track cleaning liquid in the area where the, two, where the rails are and I'll put the car on the track 
you can you can get I I have been uh, what I'll do is I'll get 30 cars put them together and get them running over the paper with a wet spot good wet spot and uh, just keep running them back and forth in a group and you got to put pressure and wiggle the wheels back and forth and now you have nice shiny wheels okay and they've all been cleaned up so that takes care of a car end result is mmm so that's that's where you get into <laughs> the importance of cleaning cars too the most likely cars to show the spare tire the real dirt the lighter the car the more it's going to pick up dirt the heavier the car it um, it will not and uh, but they all need to be clean so that's cleaning a car okay entering into the picture now is a uh, SD9 we'll just leave it at that it's a good old engine and here you got to get to both ends of the paper towel and make it wet because you have to keep contact with the track somewhere for, for pickup so in this case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it up on thing I'm gonna speed the thing all the way up to 28 speed steps which is this is what this system set for and I'm gonna run holding the engine down on the track the wheels are spinning so as I pull it down I get the other end. Now it makes it a little easier on a paper towel if you change directions. So we have now cleaned the wheels on that engine. Now though, as you can see between the two things here, the wheels on the engine really weren't dirty. Uh, it's one of the things I do around here. Generally speaking during op for an operating session we'll clean anything that's going to be used during the session will clean the wheels so and they don't get used too much in between so now you have good clean wheels that have a contact element a, uh, a product on it that's going to provide the electrical contact so this solves the uh, issue here but I think the biggest thing I have to say is the vacuuming. Uh, I've been too many places and you, it's just something you have to keep. Uh, the, a lot of clubs that I've been in, they, they do not have the best environment. And there's not a whole lot they can do about the environment they're in. And uh, they're, they're uh, prone to a lot of dust being raised. The dust settles on the track, the dust gets on the wheels, and that's where you really start having problems. So track cleaning becomes more and more important. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with just keeping the rails cleaned off. Um, wiping the rails off with alcohol uh, sure, sure helps, uh, but it doesn't put any type of uh, product on there that's going to create a better electrical contact into a maintain it. Uh, the nickel silver rail will not oxidize anywhere near as fast and I'll say this just in case there's one person out there that's still got brass rail uh, if you have the opportunity to get rid of it get rid of it. Brass rail won't work. It will oxidize and it just it just gets to be a problem where you you have to clean all the railroad before you can operate I've also ran into in a situation on some nickel silver rail that was going on 30 years old and it had the, I don't know if the alloys broke down in it but it you literally would clean the track come back in two days and you could not run on it because uh, uh, it had oxidized on the top of the rail and the engines would not run on it. it would, the electrical contact was that bad. 
And of course, the next thing in this whole thing with electrical contact and engines is going to be the stay alive decoders, which will probably solve about 99.9% .9 of all our problems. Uh, but it'll never ever uh, do away with the need to keep your track clean. Uh, so, hope some of this helped, some of the products helped, uh, some of the techniques. Uh, if you have any more questions when I post a video, don't hesitate to ask. This video is being made on the day after Thanksgiving, so I hope you had a great one. And as usual, when I make a video this time of the year, we're going to say Happy Hanukkah, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a great new year for the year 2014 coming up. So today... We're going to have a big open house tomorrow. That's why we're cleaning track. So I figured I'd stop and make the video.